Hello and welcome to the short board on Parshos Baaloscha. Are you smarter than a second grader? There's a ramp leading up to the altar in the Mishkan and in the Mikdash. The reason there's a ramp versus steps is out of modesty. In order that when the Kohanim go climb up, they won't be exposing too much of their bare flesh. In this week's Parsha, we talk about Aaron lighting the candles of the menorah. He climbs up three different stone steps and he, clean, he lights the candles or cleans the, them out depending on the time of day. My seven-year-old nephew, Moshe Mayer, who is in second grade, asks his father, if the reason why we have a ramp to the Mizbeach is because of modesty, why is there no ramp inside leading up to the menorah? Why are there stairs there? His father didn't know the answer. I didn't know the answer. But I asked my father and his wife, and they gave an answer right away. They said the difference between the two. The Mizbeach is much taller than Menorah, about three times as much. The Menorah is about five feet tall. We really don't even need steps. But the Mizbeach, it's the steps, if you had steps there, it would be a lot steeper and a lot of, you know, ex more exposure potential. And therefore, it, you don't need to have uh, steps inside. You only need the steps outside to the Menorah. Another reason is, the service of the uh, on the Mizbeach is something that's outside where people can be vis vis visible and there's a lot, lot, of, lot of people around. But inside, there's only one person there and no one else to see it. It's just the Kohen Gadol doing his service of lighting the menorah inside the Mishkan or the Mikdash. Another reason, based on the Gemara in, in uh, Zavachim, uh, the Mishnayis in Zavachim, it says that the kevesh, the ramp leading up to the Mizbeach, had the same sanctity, the same Kedusha as the Mizbeach itself. While the steps inside to the menorah were chulen, they were not sanctified. And we want to show modesty even to spiritual objects, and therefore we don't want the exposure. Now my brother, one of my brothers asked, but what exposure, what erva are we talking about here? The Kohanim were wearing breeches, the Mithna Saya, they're wearing pants. So there's not much really exposure. Why is it called Los Agalos Erva? So actually, if we go back to the Shemos Perchav Pasachav Gimel, Rashi there addresses this. Rashi says that it's not really Erva, uh, but the fact that you have to take bigger steps, bigger strides to climb steps than you would with a ramp is Mikal Mokam Harchav. These wider strides are considered close to Giloy Erva. Uh, they're not, it's not really uh, an issue, but still, we're learning from here that even the small, we want to mis minimize any exposure of flesh and even to inanimate objects. So that's a lesson there that since we're careful about not shaming, like it calls it Bizayon, Minhag Bizayon. We don't want to show any shame, even to an inanimate object, by exposing too much of our leg or thigh or whatever. Then, surely we shouldn't be shaming people who are living and breathing. We should, you know, be very sensitive to them and not make fun of them, not to embarrass them in any way. So that's the lesson of Losagala Ervascha, is teaching us about how to not embarrass other people. Now, a concluding thought, based on Reb Moshe Feinstein's Darash Moshe, I heard it from Reb Farhi, Farhi, who quoted the Reb Goldberg of Goldberger of Baltimore. He says that the steps that Aaron took when he climbed up to do the service of the menorah teaches us a different lesson, and that those that those of us who want to inspire other people, we have to be in the growth modes ourselves. We have to be constantly taking step by step, improving ourselves in order to show an example to other people, because the people don't look so much as what, just what people say, they look how people act. So those are the two lessons we have here. Do not shame inanimate objects, and surely you shouldn't be shaming people, you shouldn't be embarrassing people, and that to be an effective ex leader, an example, and teacher, you must be in the growth mode of yourself, constantly, constantly taking steps to improve yourself. So like, share, and subscribe. Thank you for listening. Have a wonderful week and a wonderful Shabbos.